And here's a first look inside. I took the bottom uh, plate off. That was relatively easy. And they've got a uh, custom cut mylar sheet here, presumably to uh, stop any shorts or anything like that. And ta-da! And there's your magic physics package. And it's got a lot of other uh, <laughs> Uh, control circuitry as well. There's quite a bit in this thing. And down in there to connect to the physics package there's a flat flex cable which uh, and a little flat flex board there which takes all the uh, all the signals back up to this part of the board somewhere here. So that's rather nice. There's a fair bit of engineering which has gone into this thing. And I can tell you I can still feel the heat. The uh, That looks like the discharge lamp and that's the uh, hottest part of it. There's your resonance uh, cell down there and your photo detector will be uh, somewhere in there as long as and uh, your uh, microwave uh, generator as well. So that is the physics package inside a rubidium frequency standard. I like it. All right, let's take a look at the processing and control circuitry around here. This one here is an 80C uh, 323. It's an 80C32, but it's a Dallas semiconductor part, so it's a DS80C 323. Um, uh, classic 8 bit microcontroller. Th this one here is a uh, PSD 813F, and that is a companion device for 8051 uh, type devices. It's got one mega flash. Uh, built in, it's got 256k of EEPROM, 16k of SRAM, it's got uh, you know 30 odd IO ports, things like that. Uh, we've got a Xilinx uh, CPLD here, that's a um, XC9572XL, and uh, that is the uh, processing core or the processing guts of this thing. I've got some analog stuff around here as well as what looks like a little uh, surface mount uh, coax connector there that might uh, possibly go out to the front panel although the front panels all the way at the uh, top part of it there so maybe some sort of uh, test connector and look in here what do you know I instantly recognize the AD9832 programmable DDS signal generator so it looks like uh, this thing actually has uh, the capability to do that uh, serial programmable frequency I was talking about it and if it's even got a max 232 there to do it so uh, presumably unless they just disconnect the pins and leave the circuitry there um, uh, something like that then this thing should have that serial input capability I'll have to probe around the pins and try that one out awesome and that looks like some sort of unpopulated uh, switch mode converter or something like that so um, I'm not quite sure but it's got the big shield around there possibly uh, to put a uh, external um, shield on top of it if they actually had the circuitry there there's a couple of bent over 90 degree TO 5 pin TO 220 packages stuffed in there and it looks like they're using that or the entire that which uh, big huge brass metal um, centerpiece as the heatsink which connects to the upper and lower cases so, so they're presumably um, some sort of drivers for the uh, physics uh, package here and there's a third device here which they've done that to and a whole bunch of unpopulated stuff around here I'm not sure why that's unpopulated I'm not sure what additional uh, capability that would actually uh, give you but there you go that's the um, I guess you call this the uh, top side even though it's probably the underside of the board uh, technically and uh, it's it's quite neat and that additional capability there with the uh, programmable digitally programmable function gener generator wow and I have to check that out because this one was not advertised as having that capability whereas some of them on eBay do actually advertise that they are serial output capable devices but I think this one probably is too And there's the assembly once I've lifted it out. They've got some foam uh, padding here. They've got more circuitry underneath there. And uh, I'm not sure why they've added the foam packaging, just impact protection or something like that. And, wow, well, geez, it's almost chock-a-block on the bottom of the board or the top side of the board as well. And it looks like we've got some 2941 uh, linear regulators in there. Once again, bolted onto there um, as the heatsink, a lot of uh, unpopulated circuitry there. There's another device in there and a coax uh, running off to, presumably, the physics package in there. That could possibly be the uh, photo cell output or something like that. Who knows? 
And this is absolutely fascinating. Take a look at it. There's the, uh, the main oscillator in it. There's the quartz oscillator in a standard can, sort of 90 degree mounted like that. But it's got something on top of it. And uh, I'm not sure what that actually is. There's got two little uh, leads coming down from it, soldered onto there. It's like some sort of um, sensor pad. Is it a thermocouple type device, which is measuring the temperature of the action of the can of the uh, oscillator? I'm I'm going to presume that's what it is. And these two devices in here are Max 4117 uh, high speed current feedback op amps. And on the end of the board is uh, this connector, which I'm presuming would be a test connector. There's a Max 392 there, which is a multi channel uh, analog muck. So I'm assuming that's sort of um, some sort of uh, test interface that they hook up when they test and uh, calibrate and uh, program this thing during production. Now, uh, basically, the thing I notice about this board is it's pretty much, um, you know, spared no expense because uh, these sort of things cost thousands of dollars. So they just, they don't try and uh, cost optimize the design at all. They just build in whatever works, whatever they need to get the job done, whatever uh, precision uh, analog devices they need. Not a problem. No, I think I'm going to stand corrected on that. I think this is the um, RF generator uh, section to generate the uh, high frequency output to drive, hence the the uh, really fatness of that RF uh, cable there. I think that is designed to drive the uh, physics package. That's not the photocell output. That's the RF output designed to drive that. And over here, I think, is uh, you know the photocell. I think um, signal probably comes back via this uh, ribbon cable here into uh, these bunch of op amps down here. And they've got a couple of uh, 10 turn trim pots down there. I don't know what that's for. Tweaking or calibrating the thing or something like that. And here we've got a couple of IFU 220 uh, end channel power MOSFETs actually uh, soldered directly onto the back of the physics package like that. Neat. Do I sense a slight bodge there with that uh, capacitor, vert that surface mount capacitor, vertically raised up like that with the wire hanging off it. Uh, I don't know whether or not, not that's intentional or uh, what they've done there. Yet another linear regulator there hooked onto the main heatsink and that pretty much covers the entire device. Really there's some unusual uh, construction techniques in there. It's got the interesting foam, some hand stuff, but I really like it. It's really quite nice and novel. They've really gone to town. There's quite a lot of uh, system engineering, which goes into not only just uh, doing the circuit, but doing the physical layout of this thing as well, and getting it right and getting it to dissipate the power in that uh, package and you know making it reliable because these things that have to be super reliable there'd be I presume really stringent uh, testing and performance checks on these things so there you have it that's inside the FE 5680A rubidium frequency standard I highly recommend you pick one up on eBay uh, I've run out of time to uh, build it into a case so and uh, get it working so I'm gonna have to uh, leave that for uh, future uh, episode and uh, possibly that serial interface as well. That's intriguing. But I hope you like that. I'll catch you next time.